Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see here on our channel, our social media, or our website. It's in the description below. Reach out to me directly, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Today, we're discussing a roughly circa 2005 Alago Unzona 1815. Slim, no-nonsense, sophisticated in detail, and universal in its style. This watch in platinum is 35 9 millimeters in diameter by only 7.6 millimeters thick and from lug to lug 42.8 millimeters with a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Throw it on my wrist 16 centimeters circumference and you can see this is very akin to a mid 20th century men's dress watch. Dimensionally and proportionally of course the watch is elegant graceful and versatile you can see this head on shot with plenty of wrist clearance. The cuff shot it'll fall under any cuff or sleeve and then down the barrel you can see I really have to pull the strap down to tighten it because it is a petite watch in most regards but look how much clearance I have on both sides of my wrist anyone can wear this watch well and if you've got a bigger wrist smaller is a vintage style so it's not necessarily out of fashion it's a good look graceful and if you want to wear an expensive watch without drawing a lot of attention a more discreet size is recommended black strap, large rectangular scale alligator leather, semi-gloss finish. You see there is a folded edge and a monotone stitch, and then there's calfskin on the underside. The watch includes a pin buckle of platinum to match the case, and the longa buckle has long been a source of fascination for me, because not only is it distinctive, faceted externally, all of high polish and prominently branded, but there's actually a raised bridge, the two prongs on the side, actually sit below the bridge, which means the strap winds up sitting inside the buckle, not stacking up with height on the wrist. It's elegant, a small detail, but it matters. Take a look, there's a retaining bar in there, so if you're like me and you have that smaller wrist and you use the smallest hole, or you might even punch another one, that little bar prevents the strap from getting pinned, as it were, on the pin, allowing you to more easily extricate a tightly strapped watch. Taking a look at the case, it's familiar long, a combination of stepped out lugs, satin mid case, and then a polished case back and bezel. The bezel has a little vertical portion outboard, but for the most part it's domed. The timepiece is simple, elegant, few details but well chosen, with an Alonga Unzona brown branded crown, sapphire crystal of course, but the watch has a dial that is both silver in color and silver in composition. It is made of sterling silver, so it's cut and then it's galvanized this silver white. We're looking at the 18... 15 model, you know that because we have the Arabic numerals vertically arrayed. There's a railroad track outboard, and you can see there's a little flourish at each of the quarters inside that track. The watch features fired steel hands at center. They are alpha style, pinched at their root rather than the heavier dauphine. I like this. The watch does feature hacking or stop seconds and a vaulted Alango Unzona logo up at 12 o'clock that is beautifully traditional. Sometimes they print straight across the dial, sometimes you have a vaulted logo. I prefer the vaulted logos. Turn it all over. You have manufactured caliper L9411. It's simple, but everything that makes Longa, Longa is here present and correct. Technical specifications, the watch is a manual wind. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It has a 45 hour power reserve, pivots on 21 joules, it does have the stop seconds function and it's adjusted in five positions the same as high horology watches and chronometers now taking a look at the finish and the design architecture is as important as finish with longa as the layout is like a pocket watch a three-quarter bridge rather than smaller separate bridges we have jewels set in golden chiton that are then themselves fixed into the bridges and plates with blued screws all the screws are fired blue and those that are polished are black polished you can see that black polish has been used for the swan's neck regulator, as well as the cap for the escape wheel, the pegs that help to locate the movement, as well as the case clamp screws. There is mirrored anglage on the edge of the three-quarter plate and the balance cock. And you can see that there's engine turning on the base plate with freehand engraving for the balance cock, such that no two are exactly alike. This is done manually and with a burn. And the patterns used are actually unique to the individual artisans who make these components. This watch is glorious in every regard with that golden hue of the bridges due to the use of nickel copper zinc, the copper giving it that golden hue. This is often described as German silver. In fact, what it is is that nickel copper zinc alloy as would have been used in the 19th and early 20th century on pocket watches. If you love this classical dress timepiece from one of the great brands of the modern era, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.